نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد عباد الله فحديثنا اليوم باختصار عن أمر ملازم للبشر لكن كثيرا منهم لا يفكرون في عواقبه حديثنا اليوم إن شاء الله عن الذنوب وأذرها على الفرد والمجتمع عن مخاطرها التي تأتي منها على الفرد وسأذكر منها إن شاء الله 12 مسألة باختصار ومسألتان في الخطبة الثانية عن أذرها على الجماعة على المجتمع والأمم The respected brothers and if sisters are there in the back Our subject today is about a subject that is related to our own nature which is sinning disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, most of us do not realize or reflect on the dire consequence that comes after it. The justice center is here. The courthouse is here, two blocks, three blocks. We have some lawyers here. Once we break the law, any law from the city code, the ordinance of the city, the state regulations, let alone the federal, we expect some punishment. We expect some things in this life. But if we disobey Allah, most cases we don't even realize that we are doing something bad. So we should double check on this. And today, inshallah, I will remind myself and remind you about 12 things that may happen to us as individuals once we disobey Allah briefly, inshallah. And in the second khutbah, in less than five minutes, I will speak about two things that may happen as a punishment to a nation or a society once it is collectively disobeying Allah and bragging about it. Let me just mention the first one in regard to us as individuals. Al-Masalatul Ayyuhal Mu'minun, Hina Manasillah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. 
ينبغي أن نفكر في العواقب ومن عواقب الظلم ومن عواقب لسية الله سبحانه وتعالى أنها تورث الذل للإنسان في الدنيا والله سبحانه وتعالى يقول ومن يهل الله فما له من مكرم ويقول ومن كان يرد العزة فلله العزة جميعا قال العلماء فمن أراد العزة فليطلبها بطاعة الله The first one is humiliation in this life The believer the person who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be venerated, will be accepted, will be respected. Once he or she disobeys Allah, Allah will humiliate him. Let him down in the eyes of people. People will despise him, will not love him. Even though they may share the same thing, same level, but they will not. In Surah uh, Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yuridu al-'izzata farillahi al-'izzatu jami'a. Whoever seeks or desires the honor, the respect, the izzat, let him seek it by obedience of Allah. It is, it is owned by Allah. It is up to Allah to give that. And he said, وَمَنْ يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُكْرِمٍ If Allah humiliates someone, he will not be given honor by anyone else. Al-Hasan al-Basr rahimahullah ta'ala said, هَانُوا عَلَيْهِ فَعَصَوْهُ وَلَوْ عَزُّوا عَلَيْهِ لَعَصَمُوا So Allah despised them. So he did not protect them from sinning. Had they, respect, had they respected the order of Allah and obeyed Allah, Allah would have not let them down. The second one is that it causes a stamp on our hearts. الأثر الثاني المعصية أنها تطبع على قلب المؤمن وفي ذلك أحاديث الشهيرة منها حديث أبي هريرة رواه الترمذي وحسنه الأباني أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن العبد إذا أخطأ خطيئة نكتت في قلبه نكتة سوداء فإذا هو نزع واستغفر وتاب سقل قلبه أو كما قال وإن عاد زيد فيها حتى تعلو قلبه وهو الران الذي ذكر الله تعالى كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون The messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Verily when the slave of Allah commits a sin a black spot appears on his heart When he refrains from it seeks forgiveness and repents his heart is polished clean but if he returns, it increases until it covers his entire heart. And that is the ran, which is rust, dust, rust, which Allah mentioned, Nay, but on their own hearts, there is a ran, that's the effect, the circumstances, the effect of their own sins, which they used to do. The third thing is the deprivation of knowledge. Imam Malik rahimahullah, when he met with Imam Shafi'i, who was young, was a very nice person, he said, Ya Buni, Allah qad alqa ala qalbika nura, fala tutfi'uhu bi ghulmati al-ma'asiyya. I saw that Allah has given you, bestowed on you, a light of knowledge. So do not make it bad with your disobedience. And he said, Shakawtu ila waki'in su'a hifzi, fa'arshadani ila tarki al-ma'asi, وأخبرني بأن العلم نور ونور الله لا يتعلى عاصي. علم نارج is a نور is a guidance is a light from Allah and it will not be given or handed out to the one who does not appreciate it. and the fourth one عباد الله رابعا تحرم الطاعة وتثبط عنها. the fourth one is that it deprives us of doing good deeds extra good deeds and keeps us down not raising up rising up to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hassan Basri once heard someone complaining to him he said I could not pray Qiyamul Layl tonight he said Qayyadatka sayyuatuk your sins has chained you kept you down you could not stand up may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us Khamisan anna min jazai sayyiyati sayyiyata ba'daha min jazai al-idhmi sayyiyati al-idhmi ba'daha min jazai al-hasanati al-hasanatu ba'daha so the fifth one, once we sin, that sin also will yield another sin. So we'll go into a vicious cycle. As soon as we commit sins, another one will appear. Until we do not even think, as the other hadith inshallah mentioned, about the believer, how he feels about his own uh, bad sins and the hypocrites. The believer think that, as a Bukhari, that there is a, there is a mountain that's going to collapse over his head. But the disbeliever and the hypocrite, just like a fly that is flying around his nose, he would just kick it out like this by his hand. He doesn't even feel it. So many times we do not even feel these things. And that shows that our iman is not high, to the best word to say it. So, Sadisan, Allah will be mad and angry 
at the person who disobeys him and does not repent. We are speaking about people who do that constantly without repenting. If we repent to Allah, that's something else, inshallah, we'll try to mention it briefly at the end of the khutbah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah said, وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ كَفَّارٍ أَذِيمٍ And Allah does not like every sinning disbeliever. In Muslim Ahmad, and Al-Bani said it's a good hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that hadith Mu'ad, he said, أَوْصَانِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِعَشْرِ كَلِمَاتٍ وَذَكَرَ مِنْهَا إِيَّاكَ وَالْمَعْصِيَةِ فَإِنَّ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ حِلُّ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ أو كما قال Beware of disobedience Beware of sins Keep yourself away Because it will lead you to the hatred of Allah Allah will hate you Allah will despise you Allah will not like you أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم سابعا حبوط العمل Seven It will render our good deeds into vain it will wash it away. There are two major hadith in that. Hadith al khalwa People when they go alone and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah save us from that. And the second one is hadith al muflis the bankrupt hadith. I will mention them briefly. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La alamanna aqwama min ummati yatuna yawm al qiyamati bi hasanatin amthali jibali tuhama. Beedan vajaluha Allahu azza wa jalla haba am manthura. Qala thubanu ya rasulallah sifhum lana. Qala. صفهم لنا جلهم لنا أي وضحهم لنا ألا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم قال أما إنهم إخوانكم ومن جلدتكم ويأخذون من الليل كما تأخذون ولكنهم قوم إذا خلوا بمحارم الله انتهكوها أسأل الله تعالى أن يغفر لنا So this hadith رواه ابن ماجر صححه ابن الباني Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I know that some people of my nation will come on the day of judgment with mass rewards good deeds like the mountains of Tihama Tihama is one of the four places in Arabia now under Saudi Arabian regime. Tihama is big, has big mountains, cracky mountains. They are bringing a lot of good deeds, wide deeds manifest, it can be seen, visible by everyone. But Allah will render it into vain. It will not avail them anything. Thuban said, O Prophet of Allah, describe them to us. Explain who are they to us. Let list be among them or like them. He said, they are same folks like you. They pray some parts of the night as you do. And they do good things. But when they are alone in the seclusion, they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not respect Allah. They keep themselves away from people. They hide themselves away from people. But they do not hide themselves away from Allah, even though He's with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. All of us have been in that position. Each and every one of us, we try to save our honor before people and we do not care about honor for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah save us from that, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The second one is Hadith Abu Hurairah and Sahih Muslim known as Hadith Al-Muflis, the bankrupt. And people today know what bankruptcy means and who is bankrupt. Same question was imposed by Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his companion. He said, Atadruna Marin Muflis. Do you know who is a bankrupt? There is an easy question. The bankrupt among us, among them at that time, is the one who doesn't have dinar or dirham. Today, the one who doesn't have money, doesn't have cars, doesn't have homes, doesn't have this, doesn't have that. He said, no, 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 that's not what I mean. Not what I meant. المفلس من أمتي من يأتي بحسنات بعدد الجبال. The bankrupt among my ummah is the one who brings, on the day of judgment, mountains of deeds. But... He came and he has slandered this person. He said bad words about that person, violated his honor. And shed the blood of this person. And backbited this person. So his good deeds will be taken, will be diminishing, will be given to them. Until his, his good deeds are gone. أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ فَطُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ فَطُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ وَلَيَّذُ بِاللَّهِ So their bad deeds will be taken out from them, will be put on him, and then he will be cast into the hellfire. May Allah save us from that. So that is one of the dire consequences of sinning and committing sins in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَامِنًا Which many people will pay more attention to because we, when it comes to dollars, money, paycheck, saving, financial matters, people, they are not heedless. They pay attention. It deprives someone of his provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Talaq, 
Surah 65, verse 2 and 3. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And whoever fears Allah, he will make for him a way out and will provide for him from where he does not expect. And the opposite to that, the one who does not fear Allah, Allah will not make an easy out for him. And Allah will not provide him from where he does not expect. And... Our scholar said, "We must be risk on the risk of the No one can get a great return of his investments in a way better than obeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and keeping himself away of disobedience to Allah. And Hadith: "Man is not a fool except by them, and not a fool except by tawbah." So, in the Abd, the Yuhram will risk by them be yudnibu. A person will be deprived his own provision by a sin that he has sinned, by a sin that he has committed, and yet he does not realize it. Few days later, the car is down. Few days later, pink slip. Few days later, foreclosing. That's really bad. That's the worst thing someone can do. We'll come to it, inshallah ta'ala, after, after uh, associating someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu uh, Ibn Maiz radiallahu anhu in his sunan narrated that Thawban radiallahu anhu said, Qala qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna rajula yuhramu rizqa bi dhanbi yusibu. A man will be deprived of his own provision because of a sin that he has done. Al-Bani said it's a good hadith. Tasi'an, tuzilu ni'ama wa tuhillu ni'amu al-ayyadu billah. It takes away the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it brings the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shura, Surah 42, verse 30, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ and whatever affliction afflicts you, then it is for what your hands have earned, and he is a clement toward much. Now, we should reflect on that before mentioning the last three things here, inshallah ta'ala. The tenth one, and then ma'asi to zero barakat fil mal. Also, in regard to the provision, the sins removes barakah, blessing in our wealth, in our time. We will make in six figures more money. But we cannot save it. We don't have that content. We don't have that happiness. We don't have that easy life like most people, as we're going to see for the nations when we come to the second khutbah, inshallah ta'ala. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the good hadith, Bukhari Muslim, about traders, people who sell and buy together. Al-bayyani bil khiyari maalim yatafarraqa. Fa'in sadaqa wa bayyana burika lahuma fi bay'ihima. Wa in katama wa kathaba muhiqat barakatu bay'ihima. Muhiqat? Which means both parties in a business transaction have a right to annul it, to annul it so long as they have not separated. And if they tell the truth and make everything clear to each other, for example, the seller and the buyer speak the truth, the seller with regard to what is purchased and the buyer with regard to the money, they will be blessed in their transaction. But if they conceal anything and lie, the blessing on their transaction would be eliminated. We do not realize that. Just want to buy and sell, want to make a deal without being honest. I'm cheating someone, but Allah is aware of that. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this hadith, and I've seen some real example in this person, uh, these things in regard to some persons that I know personally. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ أَخَذَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ يُرِيدُهَا يُرِيدُ أَدَاءَهَا أَدَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَمَنْ أَخَذَهَا يُرِيدُ إِتْلَافَهَا أَتْلَفَهُ اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ أَتْلَفَ الْمَالِ Which means, whoever takes the money of people with the intention of repaying it, Allah will repay it on his behalf. And whoever takes it in order to spoil it, to destroy it, the hadith says, Allah will destroy him himself. Not the money, not the property. He will be driving or flying, boom. He will face an accident. He's taking the poor people money, regular people money, in order just to show off and not to pay them back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him, will crush him in this life before he comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Eleventh, Hadi Ashar, Al Ma'isha to Danku fil Hayat al Dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha, the eleventh one is like straight in life, very bad life in this life. There is a word in Quran which many Mufassirin could not even explain. It's one word, three letters, but it's a vast, it's inclusive, has a lot of meanings. This is verse 124 of Surah 20. 
ومن أعرض عن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنك ضاد نون كاف ضنك This life is bad So whoever turns away from my remembrance Indeed he will have a depressed life A strained life A bad life A life with no taste Using those pills Painkillers You know enhancement These things That thing Trying to get The joy of life for everything Yet he will not have it There is a void in the heart That won't be filled Except with iman and good deeds And we will gather him On the day of resurrection blind ونحشره يوم القيامة يا عما Ithna Ashar 12th and last one inshallah ta'ala May Allah save us from the consequences of ma'asiyah Al-marad wa al-ibtila We all face that Sickness and tribulations Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in hadith al-bara' ibn Azim Makhtalaj arqun wa la aynun illa bidham wa ma yadva'u allahu anhu akthar Rawahu al-tabarani wa sahah hawla al-bani Which means every bad thing including sickness does not happen except as a consequence to a sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes away and wards off more things that we do. As he said, وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ He forgives more things. So the point here, and inshallah the second khutbah will be about only two things, two short things, that we have to reflect on the sins. Once we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just not say Allah ghafoorur rahim, we justify it even before we're doing it. I'm just going to disobey Allah, you know tomorrow we're going to go to the masjid, give two dollars to the masjid, five dollars. Not by that. That's good things. Once we do it, Prophet ﷺ told Mu'ad three things. One of them, follow the bad deeds with good deeds. It will erase it. It will wipe it off. But don't say, okay, I'm going to give five dollars tomorrow. I'm going to sin right now. I'm going to stay here on the street and I'm going to look at every woman who's not dressed properly. I'm going to go dance and drink and tomorrow I'm going to come to the masjid. No. Once you do that, come back to the masjid. But don't use that as a justification to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in advance. And don't say, okay, I just do small things. I don't kill people. I don't, I'm not a president or a minister. I don't put people in jail. Don't do that. We do a lot of things. We are only responsible about our own selves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable. And if we don't repent, some of this or all of this, maybe more, will, you know, touch us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Ibadallah, he said, Allah, al-maghfirah, wa tubu lehna wa al rahim Please ask Allah forgiveness so he may forgive us. الله رب العالمين غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب أحمده حمد الشاكرين أحمده على كل شيء يحب أن يحمد به على كل شيء يحب أن يحمد عليه وأصلي على سيد التوابين الذي كان يستغفر الله تعالى ويتوب إليه في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة عباد الله تحدثنا باختصار عن بعض آثار الذنوب على الفرب لكننا كذلك جزء من مجموعة جزء من قبيلة جزء من حي جزء من مدينة جزء من دولة جزء من أمم إذا تواطأنا على المعاصي ولم ننكرها وكنا جزءا منها ماذا نتوقع كأمة Respect brothers and sisters who spoke briefly about some of the consequences that may happen to us as individuals but we are parts of tribes neighborhoods, cities, states and the whole you know, countries and the nations if we all, if most of us sin deliberately and we agree on this and don't even Try to change that even verbally. What should we expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A lot. But I will mention only two things. The first one, which is also similar to the individuals, barakati barakati dini wa dunya. It will erase, it will distract, it will move away the blessings of life of those people, the whole nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Araf, Surah 7 verse 96, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Surah 7 verse 96 and if, the, if the, and if only the people of the cities have believed and feared Allah we would have opened upon them blessings from the heavens and the earth but, but, but they denied the messengers so we seized them, we seized them for what they were Earning. The second and last one. It will visit the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah mentioned these two bounties that are one of the most important things. 
safety and food which he reminded people of Quraysh to worship him as he has bestowed this bounty on them and warned them off of the second one let them worship the Lord of this house the Kaaba who the one who fed them from hunger and saved them from fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah Al-Nahl this وضرب الله مثلا قرية كانت آمنة مطمئنة يأتيها رزقها رغدا من كل مكان ماذا فعلت؟ فكفرت بأنعم الله أي لم تشكر نعم الله ماذا حدث لها؟ فأذاقها الله مجرد الذوق فأذاقها الله لباس الجوع والخوف لماذا؟ بما كانوا يصنعون بسبب فعلهم والعياذ بالله The verse here, I did not print the translation, but I will just try to give a summary to that meaning of the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set an example of a village that was stable, was safe. Its provision comes to it from every corner, from every di direction. Yet they, dis they, di they were kafirin. Kufr means two things, to, to, to cover some things, to deny it, to be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to refuse the faith. فَذَاقَهَ اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْجُوعِ وَالْخُوبِ Allah made them taste taste the cover of hunger and fear for what they have been doing. So but the point here, dear brothers and sisters, we should reflect on that. Every day, we wake up healthy. We should say, الحمد لله الذي رد علي روحي وعافاني في جسدي وإلى لي بذكري. Praise be to Allah who returned my soul, who made me safe in my health, my body. And he permitted me to thank him. We sin many times. We don't wake up for pleasure. We wake up for work. We wake up for, uh, for, 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 for flights. We wake up for dentist appointment, doctor appointment, immigration. We do not wake up for pleasure. This is a sin. We start our day with that. We may go to bed 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. without praying for Aisha. We were working, coming tired. We don't, we don't pay attention to that. Yet we say, okay, we are very weak ummah. We are very weak individuals. We don't have barakah in our life. We don't have barakah in our kids. Wallahi, last week somebody uh, complained to me about a person, a very good person, in, not in this city, but in, around this city. His kid, 16 years old, his son is going away. He does not even want to listen to him. Wallahi, last time his brother was in Ohio, he's in Florida. I went there with some friend. His, his son, Muhammad, 18 years old, became a Christian because he followed another girl, girlfriend. So there is no barakah in kids, there is no barakah in money, there is no barakah in health, there is no barakah in this and that because of our sins. We all have to realize that. It is my own sin. It's Abdul Qadir's sin, it's Ahmed's sin, it's Saeed's sin. That's one. Then we repent to Allah. If we repent, inshallah, Allah will change our situation. In Surah 13, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنْفُسِهِمْ Allah does not change the condition of people. From good to bad and vice versa, from bad to good, until they change what is within themselves. If you want Allah to be good to us, we should be good to Allah. Come to the masjid, not this masjid only, we are working here. The masjid neighbor too. How often do we come to the masjid? Some of us once a week, some of us once a month, some of us in Ramadan, some of us in Eid only, some of us only once when they are carried out on the shoulders of people for janazah. How can I expect my wife, my kid to be good and I'm not good to Allah? How can I expect to have barakah in my income, my check, my, my, my car, my pain check, my saving, my account? And I'm dealing with riba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has waged riba, uh, war on us if we are dealing with riba. The only sin in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waged the war on it. فَإِن لَمْ تَنْتَهُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَاءِ كُتُمُوا Oh, you believe, fear Allah, and abstain and leave, abstain from and leave what has been left from riba. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا If you don't do so, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Beware of a war from Allah and His Messenger. We cannot have a war of Allah, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should repent. We sin day in and day out. I will give you this glad tidings, inshallah, we'll conclude with it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّاءٍ All children of Adams are sinners. The best among them, the best among them are those who are repenting the most, repent the most. I sin today, I will repent again tonight. I will sin tomorrow, I repent again, do more good deeds. I fight with shaitan. Yes, I'm weak. Most of us are weak. 
Human natures are weak. Human people are weak. So we are weak. But we should not give in to shaitan, and we should not just say, okay, say, I'm going to sin day in and day out. And we, more, more importantly, we do not expect any bad or dire consequence from what we have done. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Allahumma ghfir dhunubana wa astra'u yubana. 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 اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا واغفر ذنوب علمتها وما علمها الناس اللهم لا تكشف سترك عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم استرنا فوق الارض واسترنا تحت الارض واسترنا يوم العرض يا رب العالمين اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين فرج كروبنا وكرب المسلمين واقض الدين على المدينين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنه نبيك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم اغفر الحاضرين والحاضرات واقض ما في علمك من حوائشهم اغفر ذنوبهم واستر عيوبهم يسر امورهم يا رب العالمين ارزقهم ذريات طيبة وطيبة وبارك في ذرياتهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اعطنا ولا تحرمنا واكرمنا ولا تهنا واعنا ولا تهن علينا اللهم اكرمنا بطاعتك ولا تهنا بمعصيتك يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا فرج يا رب عن اللاجئين والمهجرين وعن المحاصرين والمسجونين في سجون الطغاة اللهم عجل بفرجهم ونصرهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اهلك الطغاة والمجرمين اللهم اهلك الطغاة والمجرمين والمفسدين وانصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا ويستر الهدى إلينا اختم بالصالحات أعمالنا توفنا وأنت راض عنا بارك لنا فيما رزقتنا وقنا على النار اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها واجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الاخره اللهم اغفر لابائنا وامهاتنا اللهم اغفر لابائنا وامهاتنا اللهم اغفر لابائنا وامهاتنا اكرمهم احياء وامواتا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين واقيم الصلاه الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله